Okay, so today we introduce a new concept called arc length. For arc length, we try to consider this particular curve, this red curve C, be a bounded and continuous curve. Okay, so this is a curve specified by the vector value function R. R is depending on t, so t you can treat that as a let's say time interval. Okay, and then we can subdivide the closed interval a to b into n sub intervals by points. So we have r zero, r one, and then r two, right, and then so on so forth to r n. So we have a a different time period t zero to t n. Okay, so we divide this interval a b into n sub interval, which means there are n plus one amounts of points, and then t zero is the starting point of the time, which is a original time, and then the next period of times is t one, and then next period of time is t two, until t n minus one, t n, t n is equals to the last interval. So that last, uh, yeah, last last point, which is b. Now the points r i equals to r t i. So, for example, r zero is equals to the vector value function description at t equals to t zero. R one is equals to the vector value function description at time t equals to t one, so on so forth. Where r n is equals to r at t n, which is r of b. So here you can see r zero, r one, r two, r three, r four until dot dot dot. R i minus one, R i until R n. Okay, so we try to decompose this curve by doing this um uh, this work. We try to decompose this particular red curve into blue line segments. Totally, there should be n line segments. The first one is R zero, R one. Second one is R one, R two, R two, R three, R three, R four, and then so on, and then R n minus one to R n. Okay, so we use the norm, of course, because we calculate distance. We use the norm, right? The norm of r i minus r i minus one as an approximation to the arc length between these two points. For example, you can see here r zero to r one is accurate, right? The blue line segment and the red curve reassemble each other, but you see r one to r two, the blue straight line is here, red curve is here. Not too accurate, but our this particular line segment, the distance of this line segment, can serve as an approximation, rough approximation of、uh, the arc length of this curve. So here,、uh, if we want to calculate the length of、uh, the whole red curve, we just need to add the distance of this r zero, r one, r one, r two, r two, r three, r three, r four, until the n r n minus one r n. So here, the sum summation of all these particular line segment, the length of this line segment approximates the length C by the length of a polygonal line. So this all these are polygonal line. Now, of course, because、uh, this is obtained at t zero, t one, t two, t three, t i, t n, right? So there must be some line interval, time interval. So We let delta t i equals to the t i minus t i minus one. Similarly, delta r i is r i minus r i minus one. For example, this point is a. Let's say let me try to add a particular point here, a, and then this one is a b. Right. Okay. So within this a b, we have certain、uh, line segment, right? A B, so delta R one is equals to the vector value function R one minus vector value function R zero, and delta T I is equals to delta T one here is equals to the time where it approaches B minus the time where it approaches A. So it's the time difference when it walks from A towards B. Now we define the S N. S n as the summation of all these line segment, but now because we get delta r i and delta t i, 
So we change this into what? Into delta Ri over delta Ti and then take the norm and then times delta Ti. Okay, so here uh, we have something that is out of the scope of this course. But anyway, if you are interested, we can, uh, we can add this as a reference by completeness axiom. We assume this curve is rectifiable. So that means this curve is smooth enough. For example, differentiable, you learn in uh, one variable calculus. Uh, when we mention a curve is smooth, we mention about differentiability, right? In this course, we will also talk about differentiability, but in later, la later time slot. Smooth in certain measure theoretic sense. For example, under certain measure in uh, real analysis, this particular curve is smooth, sufficiently smooth. Okay, so let me clear about this uh, note first. Okay, so SN is this particular uh, formulation because this one is an approximation, so this is an approximation side. Now, if RT again is because uh, similar to what you did in one variable calculus, if we see delta, we always try to take a limit, right? Turn delta into D. So we delta Ri over delta Ti, so we try to turn this into the norm of dr dt. But now, we have to make a certain assumption. If the factor value function Rt has a continuous derivative Vt, okay, R is basically the position vector, Vt is the velocity vector, then this particular S is if we take n tends to infinity. Okay, let's see what, what is mean by n. N is a, uh, let's say, was N is the la last line segment. Therefore, when we take N tends to infinity, it becomes the arc length. Maximum delta T I tends to zero. So we assume here you see R zero and R one approximately approximates the curve very accurately. But R one to R two is a bit there is a bit different between this blue line segment and the red curve. So we try to add more points in between. Let's say this is R1 prime, R1 prime prime, R1 prime prime prime. Okay, so we try to approximate this portion of the red curve more accurately. And then therefore we take the time period in between to be tending to zero. So here A is the starting point, starting time slot. B is the ending time slot. So by doing so, we can turn delta Ri, delta Ti into dr dt, while delta Ti will become dt. Now dr dt is, uh, you know that already, because R is position vector, so V is a velocity vector. So next time, if you want to calculate the distance traveled by a moving particle, or you want to calculate the arc length, it's basically equals to the integral of the speed. Now, as I mentioned, Vt itself is a velocity vector. The norm of Vt is speed, right? At is acceleration vector. The norm of At is acceleration. So in all these case, if we want to calculate the arc length, so you just need to give me the vector value function R, and then I differentiate it component-wise, and then I got the velocity vector. I take the norm of the velocity vector and integrate from the starting time towards the ending time. And then I got the R length. So in mechanics, as I mentioned just now, the distance travel is basically the integral of the speed. So you can see AS is equal to the integral of its speed with respect to time. Okay, now let's try to look at several examples before we move on to the next topic. Example one, find the length of the part of the circular helix. It's described by this uh, vector value function between the point A00 and A02 pi B. Now, for this example, we give you the point, but we didn't give you the time. So what you need to, you need to do is to find out the time, T. Okay, for example, the first point A00, is basically when I substitute t equals to zero. A zero two pi b. If I see two pi b equals to b t, I solve the equation. We get t equals to two pi. 
So the time period here is 0 to 2 pi. Now, as I mentioned, uh, if I have a position vector, the arc length is basically equals to the integral of the speed with respect to time from the starting time towards the ending time. So I take the derivative of this particular position vector. So V is equal to dr dt, negative a psi t, we take it component-wise, negative a psi t, a cos t, and then we take b t is b. Of course, we have negative a psi t i plus a cos t j plus b k, i j k are the unit vectors. And then we take the norm of this V vector, and then we get what? a square psi square t plus a square cos square t, so it's a square plus b, b square. So it's a, a square plus b square and then square root. So this one is the speed function. So here, the speed function is this one. The time, as I mentioned, is from t equals to 0 to t equals to t equals 2 pi. So again, because this expression is independent of t, so we have square root a square plus b square times t from 2 pi to 0, so we get the arc length. Okay, the next question is uh, give a description of the part of the circular helix. So let us try to see. a cos i t i plus a psi t j, what's that? That one is simply a circle. Right in x y plane is a circle with a radius a, but there is a set component b t k. So actually, this curve is a circular path, spirals around the set axis, and then when time goes by, for example, t equals to zero, it is zero. T equals to one, it is b. T equals to two pi, it is two pi. Okay. So if I assume b greater than zero. So this one is actually the set component will increase as it turns. And then it also lies on the surface of the circular cylinder. As I mentioned, when I project this vector value function to two-dimensional plane, that's a circle with radius r a. So in three-dimensional sense, this is a circular cylinder. X squared plus Y squared equals to A squared with certain heights described by BT. So in this graph, we can see it's a spiral path, like your DNA. And then so we start from here. This is time equals to zero. And then we continue move around it until we move on to this point. And then we assume this is uh, rotating anticlockwisely. <coughs> okay. Next, let us move on example 2, uh, which is basically the same as example 1, even easier than example 1, because this time I provide the t equals to 0, t equals to t to u. So I know the starting point is somewhere here, the ending starting point, right? Starting point, ending point is somewhere here. Okay, so this is my curve, C. The curve described by this vector value function so xt is t, yt is this guy, zt is this guy. So what is x prime t? x prime t, you differentiate t with respect to t is 1. Differentiate yt with respect to t is what? 4 over 3 times 3 over 2, so that's equal to t. t 2, t 1 half. Set prime t is uh, you differentiate this set t, you get t. So the arc length is basically square root of 1 plus this square, so that is a 4t, and then this one is t squared. So you got this one, this is the arc length. Now for this one, uh, of course, because this is a quadratic function, so what we need to do next is to do competing square. So we try to look at these two terms, and then it becomes t plus 2 square. So if I just consider t plus 2, 2 square, I got a 4. But I just want a 1, so I need to subtract by 3. Next, this one uh, you can use integral calculator or you can use uh, log function. Right. Okay, so you got this is the integrand. Okay, and then I substitute this uh, t equals to t 
2, t equals to 0. So for example, for 2, it's a 2 plus 2 over 2. And then here is a 4 square minus 3, minus 3 half log of a 4 plus this guy, right? Uh, square root 13. When it is 0, it's basically 1 here. And then uh, 0 plus 2 is 2, 2 square 4, and then here is 1. Okay? And then afterwards, you can get the exact answer. Be careful. Uh, in this course, uh, we although we allow you to use the calculator, the art length should be given in excess value. So if you want to give in a numeric answers, that means uh, if you want to press your calculator, you should tell me that it's roughly equals to, but not equals to. Okay, so the technique is very simple. I just use the formula here. Okay, so I get, uh, yeah, I just use the formula by calculating the velocity vector, take the norm of the velocity vector from the beginning time towards the ending time, and then integrate. Okay, so the next topic is art length parametrization. So let us try to consider one of this, uh, one of this situation. Let R1t be one of this curve described by cosine t, psi t, and then 2t where t of course is 0 to 2 pi, so it revolves a loop, a circular loop. R2t is, a uh, you see, cosine 3 t, psi 3 t, 6 t. So here, the difference between R1t and also R2t is uh, basically I substitute the t here by 3 t. 2 t here becomes 2 times 3 t, so that's 6 t. And then, of course, uh, because I want R1 equals to R2, so the time, ending time must change we should not use 2 pi as the ending time, we should use 2 pi over 3. Because I substitute t as 3t here, so 2 pi divided by 3 is the new ending time. These two curves are the same, so that means r1t and r2t are the same. But except we get different speed, because if I differentiate, it will be a negative psi t, cos t, and then 2. Negative 3 psi 3t, 3, 3 cos 3t, and then 6. So, of course, uh, there is a scalar multiple. So, the speed of R2 is a scalar, is something times the speed of R1. It can be expressed as the scalar multiple of the speed of uh, <coughs> R1. The curve R2, as I mentioned, is obtained by replacing every t in R1t by 3t. The initial time and final time are adjusted such that the end point of both graphs remain the same. So let us try to go back to this graph. This graph 2 pi b, right? Starting from this point, this point a, until this point b. So I now change the parameter, becomes uh, something, let's say, b over 3 or 3b, three something like that. But it's still going from this way and then continuing revolving until it reached this point. The starting point and ending point of this doesn't change. Then we say R2 is a re-parameterization of R1. Definition. If Rs is a parametric curve such that the norm of R prime S, that means the norm of the velocity vector, it equals to 1 for all s. Then we say that the curve is parametrized by art length. So this one is very important. So let me, let me underline this one. Okay. So underline this one. Parametrized by art length. Okay. So our goal is that given any parametric curve rt, we want to find a new parameter s. And then I substitute back to this the position of all this t, such that with the new parameter s, the new parametric curve R s travels at unit speed. Because for unit speed, it matches with this norm condition. Norm of R prime s is equals to one, so it uh, it actually the curve travels at unit speed. That means it is parametrized by R length. So the goal here. Again, uh, let me mention about it. We want to re-parameterize the curve by art length. Okay, so let us move on to the next page. Uh, okay, let, let me 
delete delete this first. Okay. So uh, our length parametrization, the step is uh, very simple. Given any curve from an interval, that means the time interval a b towards r three. Now we consider three dimensional plane. So this is a curve, three dimensional curve. We compute this particular quantity, which you have already seen in homework two before learning that. But uh, homework two doesn't need this parameter, right? Okay, you just need to know dS dt is equals to the norm of r prime t. Since the upper limit of the above integral, that means this integral is t, the function s is actually a function of t. So s is equals to a particular function f of t. So we do we do uh, junior school mathematics change of subject, express t as t s. Okay, just now for example, I give you y equals to two x. So what is x? X equals to y over two, right? So y equals to two t plus one. So what is uh, t? Is a uh, y minus one and then over two. Okay, so the next step is express t as t equals to a function depending on s. Then we change all the t in the original function by this particular function of s in the original curve. Then the new parameterization rs will be r length parameterized. Okay, so how do we do the proof? How do we show that by doing all these uh, four steps for uh, the whole process and then we get an uh, R-length parameterized curve? So of course for R-length parameterized, as I mentioned in the definition, we need the speed to be 1 for any S. So therefore, the, pr the goal of our proof is to show that the norm of R prime S, this vector is equal to 1, right? So the norm of R prime S itself is a scalar. But our prime s is again dr dt dt ds using one variable chain rule, and then uh, dr dt becomes the norm of our prime t and then dt ds. So we call the definition of s in step one. S is this guy. So what is ds dt? ds dt is a norm of our prime t. So I got this one. Okay, by what theorem? It's a fundamental theorem of calculus. So dt ds is 1 over ds dt. Notice that in one variable calculus, we have such an inversion rule. But uh, in higher dimensional case, that means in this course, multivariable calculus, later on when, when you learn about partial derivative, we cannot make use of such rule. There's no such interconversion. Right, okay. So ds dt is norm of r prime t. So 1 over ds dt is 1 over norm of r prime t. So it follows that the r prime s, the norm of r prime s is 1. Why? Because you just need to consider this expression and this expression. And then you put this guy, put this guy, right? Put this guy back to this norm. And then you can eliminate this norm of r prime t and this norm of r prime t and then we get a 1. Then the parameterization rs will be r length parameterized and it possesses unit speed. Everything so far so good? Right. Okay, now let us try to look at some example. How do we practically apply this process and step of reparameterization into doing problems? Okay, so uh, find the art length function. Okay, anyway, I give you the vector value function, which is a straight line, right? So for example, I substitute zero, t equals to zero, so I get three, and then here is four. Here's zero, right? So three, zero is somewhere here, so that is this point. Okay, when I substitute t equals to one, the ending point, we get zero, i plus four j. So we get this guy. Okay. Now, uh, <clears throat> the step one is what? The step one is uh, we try to ca express this one, compute this particular integral, and then we change the function t in terms of s. So the norm of r prime t is equals to 5. And then I integrate this guy, s t is equals to 0 to t. 
So that is the norm of uh, R prime U is also five, right? Because norm of R prime T is five, norm of R prime U, U is just a dummy variable. So I got integrate from zero to T and then five du. So that is a uh, five T. Okay, so we get S equals to five T. Now what is T? Because in the first step, you try to express T as T equals to T of S. So now S is 5T, so T is S over 5. And then we try to put all this parameter T equals to S over 5 into the original vector value function. That means whatever, whenever I see a T here, I put it at S over 5. So that is 3 minus 3 times S over 5. And then here is a 4s over 5. Now, of course, because a 0 less than or equals to t less than or equals to 1, but now this t is a s over 5. So when t equals to 1, s is exactly equals to 5. When t is 0, s is 0. So the, okay, so here you see 0 less than or equals to s less than or equals to 5. This is the arc length parameterized vector value function. If not, you can try to compute the norm of uh, the speed, right? The norm of velocity of this function. You will get it is equals to one. Next, we try to go on to a more challenging question. Given a vector value function, rt equals to 3t cos t i plus 3t psi t j plus 2 root 2 t 3 half k. Actually, we repeat the same step. We calculate the speed. Okay, so here we calculate the speed. But before that, we need to calculate the velocity function. 3t cos t differentiating with respect to t. Again, I keep t as a constant. I get differentiate cos t is negative psi t. I differentiating t is 1, keeping cos t as a constant function. So here, 3 t psi t, similarly, I get 3 psi t times 1 plus 3 t times cos t. And then this one, 2 root 2, and then 3 half t, 1 half. Okay, so I get the velocity function on the second line. And then I try to make use of this velocity function to get the speed. The speed is basically the norm of this velocity function. So after doing everything, I get V equals to 3 times 1 plus T. So what is my S? S is a integrate from T equals to 0 to a certain time period. And then this particular speed function, du. After integrating, I get this one. Now you see, s is equals to 3 times t plus t squared over 2, which I cannot do change of subject immediately because this is a quadratic term, t squared, and then this is s linear, t is also linear here, right? So this is actually a quadratic function. t squared plus 2t equals to 2s over 3, this one is a quadratic function in T. So what can I do? I use the quadratic formula, negative B plus or minus square root B square minus 4AC over 2A, right? So now A is 1, B is 2, and then C is negative 2S over 3. So after solving it, I get, of course I get two quantities of T, but because T is time, we implicitly assume t is time, so t must be greater or equals to zero. So I swap. That means I put every t here, whatever, let's say this t, this t, this t, this t, this t, this t, this t. okay. So all those amount of t, I put as this one, okay? And then I get the arc length parameterized curve. R vector value function R of S. Is that okay? So if everything is okay, uh, let me stop here.